welcome to the technical demonstration of Splunking with SmartStore and Cloud in HyperStore. In this video, we will demonstrate a fully functional Splunk SmartStore with Cloud in HyperStore solution starting from setup all the way to searching data from within SmartStore. Let us begin with getting Cloud in HyperStore ready. We begin by creating a group and a user within that group using Cloudian Management Console CMC. Example user created here is Splunk S2 demo. Once a user is created, Gather the access key and the secret key. SmartStore will use these credentials to connect to user's bucket. Next, create a bucket as a target location for the remote path in the indexes.conf. Here, we create a bucket named S3 Splunk S2 demo for that purpose. Moving on to the Splunk configuration. Start by validating that the Splunk indexer can resolve the cluster endpoints of the hyperstore. A ping test will validate the name resolution and network connectivity. Currently, configuring Splunk Start Store means directly editing the indexes.con file. Here we see the indexes.con file. A stanza is created in the indexes.con for index Splunk S2 demo with volume set to be on remote storage. Replication factor is set to auto, storage type is set to remote, and path is set to the bucket created on Cloud in HyperStore. The access key and the secret key need to be added into this stanza. And the endpoint is also configured here. Note, each index requires sole access to either a S3 bucket on Cloudian or sole access to a folder underneath the bucket. SmartStore does not allow multiple indexes with the same S3 path. Once the indexes.conf is set with the remote path, the configuration needs to be pushed to all indexers on the cluster. This can be done by using a bundle push. That will kick off a rolling restart of the Splunk indexes on the cluster. At this time, any indexes that were configured with the remote path will start migrating their warm buckets to SmartStore. Any new indexes that were, that were created will be SmartStore enabled right away. Now that the SmartStore is set up, let's make sure that the newly set up index Splunk S2 demo is actually present and ingesting data. Looking at the Splunk MC, the new index Splunk S2 demo is created and present on all nine indexers. There is data being ingested into the Splunk S2 demo index. Drill down into more granular details of Splunk S2 demo by executing commands directly from the CLI. Here we can see the summary stats for the index using the db inspect command, which works on a per indexer basis. We have automated the process for any per indexer commands for the purpose of this demo. The index here has about 75 gigabyte of data already ingested. Look at the size of the index on each of the Splunk indexer file systems. We have used the du command, an OS level command, to showcase this information. Here we see the local disk usage per indexer. This is the data in the hot and warm bucket on the indexers. And this next command, which is also db inspect, will show us the hot and warm bucket count per indexer. As you can see, all data resides currently in the hot buckets on the local disks. Next, we perform a search for a seeded keyword Poseidon, which occurs every 100k instances. Total search results return are 1980 occurrences of this particular seed, which matches our expectations. Finally, we start the actual smart store operations. We now roll the buckets from hot to warm. This will move the data from hot buckets into smart store cache, as well as migrating the master copy onto HyperStore, which is the remote storage. We check the bucket counts again using the command line. Now, all hot buckets have been migrated to warm buckets on SmartStore cache. At this point, SmartStore cache is in sync with the master copy which resides on Cloudian on the remote storage. Next, we evict the data from SmartStore cache using the curl command. This will remove local copies of the warm buckets in the demo index and ensure that the next request for data is serviced from the master copy which resides on the remote hyperstore. After cache evictions, we check the MC for activity on Splunk indexes. Here we can see bucket upload activity cluster, which is triggered when we roll the hot buckets to warm buckets. We again check the Splunk indexer local disk usage. This time, the data on the indexers locally is in kilobytes only. Most of the data has now been rolled over to the warm buckets on the Cloudian hyperstore and the cache has been evicted. Viewing the same index in MC shows the index size as if all of the data is local. 
It is a much bigger size as Splunk is accounting for the hot buckets which are local as well as warm buckets even though they reside on the remote storage as we've already seen. We can verify the warm bucket data actually resides on Hyperstore by browsing the CMC for the Hyperstore bucket S3 Splunk S2 demo. And it shows the Splunk data uploaded in similar structure as local index files. Final part of the SmartShore operations and the most important part is to show that the data residing on Cloudine Hyperstore is searchable and the process is seamless. We run our search for the seeded term Poseidon again. The search will look for the data on hot buckets or the SmartShow cache first. A miss on both automatically triggers a download of bucket from Cloud in Hyperstore to Splunk Smart Store cache, and the search results will be serviced from the Smart Store cache. This can be verified by looking at the Splunk MC. Reviewing the MC for Smart Store shows bucket download activities from Hyperstore in addition to the older upload activities which we had already seen. The downloads also benefited from Splunk's cache manager, which was able to prefetch 25% of the data for the indexers. We again check the Splunk indexer local disk usage and see that the data has been pulled back onto the indexers locally in the SmartStore cache as expected. In conclusion, Splunk SmartStore and Cloud in Hyperstore liberate scaling of compute from storage. Indexers can now scale without needing to scale expensive storage. Indexer failure is also independent of storage failure. And finally, this dramatically lowers the TCO of Splunk solution versus traditional storage solutions. Thank you for listening.